Hello, hello. My name is Jenna Bosiger, and you're watching Cryptic Cryptids. I'm really excited about this episode. Um, it's more on my salt and sea explorations, and I was on a mission in and around the salt and sea. There is a lot of archaeological ancient, ancient, ancient sites. I'm talking thousands of years old. And they include intaglios, uh, the Blythe intaglios, which are not very well known, not as well as the Nazca lines or the Atacama giant. But they exist and there's a lot of them. And so I've spent literally hours scouring Google Sky Maps, just zoomed all the way in, just scanning, 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 and putting hearts by things that I find interesting. And I found something so fascinating in the middle of nowhere, and I decided to go and find it. And I did. I did find it. So, besides the well-known geoglyphs and intaglios in and around the Salton Sea, I found this one that is, I'm, it's just fascinating. And when I arrived at the location, I was kind of blown away by what I saw. I was so excited and the wind was like crazy and it was so hot outside. I really wanted to stay there for just hours and hours and days and days, but I will make it very clear that I treaded very lightly. I tiptoed around this place and I did not leave a single footprint or trace of my having been there. So don't think I wasn't being completely respectful of this most amazing site. Now, I haven't heard anything about this place. I found it because I was literally scouring the sand and just the rocks and looking for things. And I found it all on my own both on Google Sky Map and while I was driving around the area looking for it. In this rock pile, there is like a hole and it was hollow inside and there was no way I was going to stick my hand in there, but it was very interesting. Now, in trying to determine the age of this geometric, sacred geometry shape in this, it's an intaglio, it's like a crop circle. In trying to figure out how old it is, I notice this little cactus growing out of one of the rock piles. Now, that doesn't happen overnight. To me, it had a feeling of being old, but you don't, I don't know. Um, now, I did venture into the center of this amazing sacred geometrical shape that's really large, but I, I was very, very careful not to leave any footprints or traces of disturbing any of the rocks or anything that I was there to see. Now, at the very center, I found some interesting shells that seemed kind of large. And inside of one of these um, branches, you can see there's a green rock stuck inside. Um, if you can see that, I'm not sure, but there was a green rock that was stuck inside of one of the branches. I found that interesting. Okay, now there's piles of rocks all around this circular 
sacred geometrical shape. But let me tell you what, one of these rock piles had an opening. Now let me tell you what else. It's facing northwest, southeast. So guess who's going to go back there on December 21st? That's the winter solstice. And I cannot wait to see what happens either in the morning or the evening when the light shine. I bet you anything that there's the light's going to shine through that hole. And, you know, look... I have no way of determining how old this is, but I know that some of these geoglyphs in the area are up to 10,000 years old. So it was a really exciting trip. I was so excited to be there. And I love everything about the Salton Sea, except for the growth, except for the farming. I love the barrenness of it. I love the just the untouched, un, you know, the desert just left alone the way it is. It's beautiful. And I plan to come back to these imperial sand dunes to do my moonrise shoot over the sand dunes which I did recently do, but there were some issues with that. We'll get to that later. Okay, so it may not be the most becoming picture or video of myself, but I just wanted to post it to show you how badly I was sweating. I mean, my whole forehead, I had sweat running into my eyes and I was panting. And I finally had to get back in the car before I had a heat stroke and died right there at the sacred geometrical circle. So as you can imagine, when I got home, I did some research about crop circles and sacred geometry. And the first known and reported, anyways, crop circle um, it was reported in 1678. So anybody believing that those guys who, who said it was a hoax and they had been doing all the crop circles, well, they weren't, they weren't, they didn't do the one in 1698 or 1678. But of course, guess who did? A devil. Because back then they blamed everything. Well, they still do. They blame everything the unknown on devils and demons. And, uh, no exception here, as you can see the devil himself making a crop circle in 1678. And, you know, as far as being, there is definitely a message that's going on here. Let's be real. Okay, the Fibonacci sequence, let's hope you've all heard of it. And the Mandelbrot set, the Mandelbrot set really needs to be seen as a GIF but, you know, I didn't want to get into any copyright issues. But I ask you to go online and search for the Mandelbrot set as a GIF or as a, you can even do it on YouTube and search for the video of a Mandelbrot set. It's a mathematical equation, just like the Fibonacci sequence and just like all sacred geometry. But the thing about the Mandelbrot set and the Fibonacci sequence, what they have in common is that they, they continue, they self-replicate like life, how life, how life continues. Now, while doing my research, um, looking for anything that looks similar to this crop circle, sand circle shape that I found as far as sacred geometry goes. And I came across something that I had never heard of before called Vesica Piscis. Vesica Piscis is called the womb of the universe. And I found this little excerpt and I want to give credit to sacredgoddess.com because they're the ones that posted this, but it basically points out 
It's the sacred geometry design of creation. Okay, it's it's all very deep. And in fact, it has a lot to do with quantum physics. And um, we're just now getting into that. And believe it or not, I am working on a video about the quantum physics of cloaking. Now, before you think I'm crazy, there is some science behind it. And I find it very interesting in how it all applies and ties in to sacred geometry. And yes, there will be an upcoming video about the quantum Bigfoot. Look, it has to do with dimensions. It has to do with science. It has to do with math. And you know what you can't argue about? Math. Now, on my way out and away and back home from the Sultan, from my Sultan Sea exploration to this amazing crop circle, sand circle that I found, I found something that I did not like at all. This little church seems innocent enough, right? Wrong. It seems like it's perched upon some just regular old little sand dune. I'm thinking wrong again. Because let's make some comparisons to the man-made mounds in both Ohio, in England, in Cahokia, Louisiana, and all over the United States. And guess what they like to do? They like to build steps and then they like to put their own church upon the top of it. Well, that's not cool. And I have a feeling that this area, this mound here with this little church on top, needs some investigating. So I will be including that in one of my future salt and sea to do explorations. And finally, here I am at the Imperial Sand Dunes, grabbing sand in my hand, like sand through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Still a mystery up for some interpretation, but I'm happy to share it with you. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe and like. Thanks, bye.